All right, we're back. We're on page 190, and we were talking about uh, parametric equations for parabolas, writing your own parameterizations. Um, they're conic sections, which is why we're doing it. I mean, basically, we already did parabolas before, but uh, we've seen you can let x equal t, you can let y equal t, you can let x equal negative t, y equal negative t, whatever. Um, and it just depends on like what is a function of what. If y is a function of x, x equals t is a great choice. If uh, x is a function of y, then y equals t is a really good choice. So the considerations you should make, I think, are uh, what direction you're going in. Uh, well, let's say what's a function of what? What's a func of what? Right, so y equals f of x, x equals f of y, you know, maybe neither, which is, that's when you kind of need trig functions to like help you out usually. Um, so that's a thing to think about. Uh, what direction you want to go? So do you want to go left to right? Do you want to go right to left? Do you want to go up, down, down, up? Like uh, what direction you want to go? So what direction you want? And then the other thing which we didn't really address is the speed at which you go, right? So if we look back, if we look back, we talked a lot about how here in this scenario, if uh, t increases by one, y increases by one. We could have made it so that, um, you know, y is equal to two t. And then if y, if t increases by one, y increases by two. So you're going twice as fast. We could have made it uh, y equals t over 10. So if t increases by one, y increases by one tenth. So you're going way slower. So the speed is a big factor, which like, Generally speaking, unless people give you a lot of parameters that you need to follow, like you need to make it do this in this amount of time, usually you don't think about the speed, but you can speed things up or slow them down depending on the choices you make. Uh, so let's see this. New problem. Particle moves along a parabolic path, passes through the points 2, 5, negative 1, 1, and 6, negative 2 in that order, okay, while moving in one direction. All right. So we want to write parametric equations for the motion of the particle and check them on your calculator. Is there more than one possible direction this parabola can open? I don't know. Uh, let's see. So I think like a, a decent graph is probably called for, like not perfect, but at least the, the correct relative positions, probably. So I don't know. Graphing, not my thing. It's like, it's like my weird slogan. You know, like, Vote for me, graphing, not really my thing. Uh, two and five, let's say. And then negative one and one, I guess, would be like here. And then uh, six, negative two, seems like it would be like here. Now we have to go in that order. So you have to start here. So now the thing is, your inclination, my inclination, so I'm gonna assume it's yours, is to somehow make that the vertex. But like, it doesn't need to be. Um, it could be sort of like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it, but like, uh, you know, it could, uh, it could do something like that, right? And then the direction, we need to go like this. All right, so I look at this and I say, this is a parabola, right? This is definitely a parabola where X is a function of Y. So it's definitely X is a function of Y because it opens to the right. And that's where you get uh, x equals something y squared, right? So x is a function of y. I need to figure out what function of y will make me go through these three points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a calculator for that. So to do that, I'm gonna define a function called x of y colon equals, uh, I'm going to go with a times y squared plus b times y plus c. Then I'm going to let the calculator solve. So I'm going to solve a system of equations where, what do we know? So this is tricky, or it's not really tricky, but you can mess it up. x is a function of y, right? So I'm going to do, for the first point, first ordered pair, I know that x of the y coordinate, so x of 5 has to equal 2. I know that x of 1 has to equal negative 1, right? It's you plug y in and you get x. So the point is negative 1, 1. So I plug 1 in for y and it gives me negative 1 for x. And then also I know that 
x of negative 2 has to give me 6. I'm going to solve this for, uh, so let's, let's just pretend I'm writing a sentence. Let's solve this for a, b, and c. All right, we're, I'm definitely using a calculator for that. So let's, let's go to the calculator and get those values. All right, I think it's time that I started a new, at the very least, problem. So I'm going to start a new problem, calculator. I'm going to define it, x of y colon equals. So a lot of not optional multiplication, a times y squared, b times y. All of these multiplications are not optional. You have to do them. And this, all right, solve the system. Menu 3, 7, okay, uh, three equations, a, b, and c. But you don't have to type much. X of 5 should be 2. Uh, X of 1 should be negative 1. And X of negative 2 should equal 6. Um, okay. So I get those. That's crazy. Okay. So I'm going to handwrite those right now. So you should also handwrite them. So A is 37 over 84. B is negative 53 over 28. And then C is 19 over 42. It's like, could you solve that by hand? Technically, sure. Uh, I'm also going to do a thing here where I redefine. Um, so I'm going to do X of Y and then just such that this. Like, just arrow up, get it, press enter. And then I'm going to redefine that as X of Y. X of Y colon equals this. So now this is X of Y. So if I do X of when y is 5, I should get 2. If I do x of when y is 1, I should get negative 1. x of when y is negative 2, I should get 6. So it's working. This is the function that I want to use. So I have x of y. Let's go back um, to the notes and see. Let's like think through what we need to happen now. Um, and like the more you think about it, the easier this gets. But like, I don't know. Uh, other than thinking it through, I don't know a, a way to make it any easier. So let, let's say that we want it to take uh, one, one second, right? So we want it to take one second. So that means that I'm going to be at this point right up here at t equals zero, and I'm going to be down here at t equals one. So I need, so because X is a function of Y, Y is just gonna do its thing. And then X just has to keep up. And the way that X keeps up is that it just follows whatever this tells it to do, it has no choice. So we're just gonna let X follow this. So X is not the concern, the concern is Y. So I'm gonna make some parametric equations. X has no choice. The real question is what is Y gonna do? Well, y needs to be able to go from 5 down to negative 2, and I want it to do that in seven sec in one second, rather. Where do I get 7? I think because of the difference between them. So I want y to go from 5 to negative 2 in one second, right? So I want a set of equations. Oh, my God. What am I trying to do? I want a set of equations that will make this happen. Ah, second. Okay, so I'm gonna say that y is equal to, well, it's gonna start at five, you're gonna lose seven, it's gonna take one second, and then times t. That's it, we've done that like a lot, right? That's just like your, your delta y type situation. So y should be five minus seven t. And then what's x doing? x is having no choice, x is gonna do this. Right, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that uh, I have all that stuff kind of like saved. So I have this, this, and then when I write the next thing, I'm gonna highlight it again uh, just to like clarify where it came from. So I'm just gonna do x of five minus seven t. That should do it. I be I believe that that is going to work. Um, and so that where's x coming from? It's coming from here, right? Follow, follow the highlights. That's my, my theory is that you'll be able to do that. Let's graph it and see if it worked. Um, so calculator. So we already have X of Y stored and that's a big deal. 
So I'm going to add a graph page doc for option four. I'm going to change to parametric. So option four. And then I need to do x of 5 minus 7t. I make this 5 minus 7t. I need t to just go from 0 to 1. Press Enter. OK, let's trace. Let's see if this worked. Menu, 5, Enter. When t is 0, I'm at 2, 5, which I should have been. When t is 1, I'm at 6, negative 2, which is where I should have been. A question, though, well, what the? Uh, what's happening? Oh, I know what's happening. I think I know what's happening. 0.13, uh, or 1 is not a multiple of 0.13. So it's stopping at the, the biggest multiple of 0.13 that is smaller than 1. I'm going to change this to 0.1, and our graph is going to change. Let's try uh, tracing it now. New 5, enter. There you go. Now you can see that it's actually a point on it. Other, it was just like in space, and that was weird. Uh, what if I want to know when do I get to the point negative 1, 1? So when do I get to the point negative 1, 1? I have two choices. Negative 1, 1 has a y coordinate of 1. So if I just solve 5 minus 7t equals 1 for t, it gives me t equals 4 sevenths. That's when y is equal to um, 1. So let me trace again. Menu 5, trace. I'm going to type in 4 over 7. And I'm at the point negative 1, 1, which is exactly where I thought it would be. The other option is I can try to solve for when x is equal to negative 1. But the equation governing x is quadratic. So I don't think that's going to work as well. Um, but I can try it. So it's, it's going to be x of 5 minus 7t equals negative 1. Solve that for t. So why am I getting two values? I'm getting 4 sevenths, which is definitely the right answer. And I'm getting 9 over 37. Well, if you go back and look, there's actually two times at which x is going to be equal to negative 1. So we found the right one by using the linear equation, which is like, that's the choice you should make. You should always go with linear if you can, because linear is the easiest. If you use the quadratic version, um, we got, we got, what did we get? I don't remember, four sevenths was one option, and that worked. And then uh, the other thing is nine over 37. So if I do nine over 37, you can see x is also negative 1, but at that time when x is negative 1, y is not positive 1. So that's not the answer. So you have to watch out for those kinds of extraneous things. But I'm going to go back to the notes because I think that we did a pretty good job on this. Uh, the only thing that I would consider, because you should think about these things, what if it took like 30 seconds? Um, so let's say, let's change up the marker. And if we want it to take 30 seconds, I think all we need to do is make a little bit of a modification. So I'm going to say this is going to be 5 minus you lose 7 over 30. And then here we're just going to plug whatever y is into this. And now this will take 30. And I'm realizing on the previous one I forgot to put the time. So like technically it's not a really complete solution. There we go. OK. So I'm going to stop here. Um, I think that's a really good problem. Uh, you should review it. Maybe try to make your own. Uh, I don't know if anybody actually does try to make their own, but I think that's a great way to learn. That's how I learn a lot of this stuff is make my own problem, solve it, think about it. And I'm like, oh, man, that is something people should know. And then I put it in the notes. So anyway, I will be back uh, in the next video to talk about some more stuff. So I will see you there.